Speaker Paul Ryan wrapping up his time in Congress with a farewell tour. Ryan is stepping down after 20 years in D.C., giving his final farewell address next Wednesday. The Janesville Republican points to the 2017 GOP tax cuts as among his highlights in office. Well, we are joined by NBC's Chuck Todd with Meet the Press. Chuck, it's always great to see you. Um, as you know, it is Speaker Paul Ryan's farewell tour. Uh, he spent 20 years in D.C., three of those years as House Speaker. The history books will say he is or was the 54th Speaker. What else will they mm -hmm. say? I think, that, uh, I, I, I think that he was the guy stuck in the Trump era. And I think that, that, that he, his speakership in some ways was, is, is going to be overshadowed by Donald Trump um, and by the fact that uh, in some ways we may look back on his speakership and say he was the last leader of the old Republican Party, right? And Donald Trump's the first leader of the new Republican Party. Um, but I think it's, it, 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 it's interesting. I think when you go through the hits, runs, and errors of the political career of Paul Ryan, oddly enough, the speakership... And I bet you he might agree with this. Even though it will be mentioned as yeah. top, it's the top office he held, mm -hmm. it's probably the fifth paragraph of importance in what he's accomplished. Well, and it's still the job that he says he didn't really want. He wanted ways and means. Uh, well, and, and by the way, I could argue he conducted, <laughs> he, he, was in, he acted that way in the job. And you got to ask yourself, should you ever hold an office you've never wanted? Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I, I, at, at first you thought, I think that was always like shtick. I think you and I both thought it was a bit of shtick by Ryan. Right. Oh, no, 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 no. I've never really wanted it, but <laughs> please, please, you know, pray. But I actually think over time, he really never wanted it. And you have to ask yourself, then why'd you do it? Do you think you know? a lot of people... At the end of the day, he did it for the party. I know why he did it. Right. It was a desperation by the rest of the, of the establishment wing of the party. At the end of the day, though, and he's already talking about it, he thinks the GOP tax cuts put the economy and tax reform in a better place than it has been in the last maybe half century. Uh, so he sees that as a win. But it also added to the other big issue that he always wanted to tackle, right. the national debt. That's where I think that's why his legacy will be mixed. I mean, the fact of the matter is er, there's a, a, about 1,000 Fortune 1,000 CEOs that would agree with him on the tax cut and the economy. Um, but there's not as many actual taxpayers that would agree with him on that. But it's certainly the corporate tax cut and every CEO believes that that corporate tax cut is what is allowing this, this economy to take off. But you are right. I think that the, his rhetoric about the debt and his record on the debt um, couldn't be in uh, couldn't be in more um, couldn't be in more conflict with each other, and I do think that will be something that will be always a black mark on his legacy. All right, we just got a few seconds left. Do you agree with me though that we'll likely not see him on the political arena if he's going to be president of anything? It would be the Green Bay Packers versus the United States. <laughs> yeah, or a think tank called the American Enterprise yeah. Institute. He may be president someday, but it will be of a think tank before, it will, or a university before uh, it's president of the United States. All right, Chuck Todd, always appreciate your time. You got it, Mr. Benson. Thank you, sir.